Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel and to highlights of Stage 7 Paranese 2021, the only mountaintop finish of this year's edition with a revised route, but pretty much, well, exactly the same finish. 120 k's, finishing with the Colomian climb, 16.2 k's at 6.2% gradient, and a very regular climb, no sustained steep pinches in this one. A draft would be important. If the breakaway didn't win, then Roglic, the winner of two stages already, was obviously the heavy favourite to win the stage from the GC group. But a large and very strong breakaway did go up the road. The only problem was it had riders like Cataneo in it, Dylan Turns and Nielsen Palace, who all were within three minutes in the general classification. So whilst it had the names we expected, like Lutsenko, Maida, Amador and De Hent, the presence of those riders relatively close on GC meant that Jumbo Visma couldn't just let the breakaway go out to five or six minutes and let them win the stage. And that problem for the breakaway was compounded when other teams like Bora, DSM and Bike Exchange began to pace and bring the gap down before the start of the climb. Wait, what? <laughs> What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Can someone tell me how it makes sense for DSM, Bora, and Bike Exchange to have paced during this stage with Yumbo Visma able to sit on with their riders being kept fresh, bringing the breakaways gap down from two and a half minutes to a minute before the climb? It made zero sense to me because the only way you could win the stage if you're DSM Bora or Bike Exchange was to put a strong rider in the breakaway. If you pace and bring the brake back so that someone else from the GC group wins the stage, the only person that will win is Roglic. But anyway, just under 20 k's to go, the breakaway's just hit the base of the climb and it's starting to splinter with some of the riders dropping off Bennett and Amador's work done for the day. David de la Cruz struggling, Dylan turns as well, trying to get back on to this break. He's got teammate Gino Maida for Bahrain Victorious in there as well. With about 12 k's to go, Alexei Lutschenko attacked the break, trying to get rid of Cataneo and Paulus, I think, because maybe he thought their proximity on GC was causing them to be chased so hard. Paulus was able to close that gap VF Education Nippo to the Lutschenko group, and it was Gino Maida, the Swiss rider. He looked good at the end of last year when he was on NTT attacking that group. Lutschenko having an issue with his hamstring, cramping or bonking, I couldn't tell which, but he was then out of stage contention and it was the trio of Elison, Maida and Paulus going clear with about a 50 second lead on the peloton with 9Ks to go. Back to back days in the breakaway for Kenny Elison with an EF Education Nippo rider there. Once again, Maida was sitting on a little bit and we knew why shortly afterwards he wanted to get rid of both these guys. And it was Jumbo Visma behind pacing from like 10 to 8 k's to go on the climb, but not pacing really hard. They weren't eating into the breakaways gap at all when Sam Moomin was on the front. And it was only when Coffey just started to pace, we thought maybe for Guillaume Martin, but it's actually to launch Simon Geschke, the birthday boy, off the front. Martin losing his wheel, Dylan van Baal behind him for Ineos. So Coffey's plan, which I actually agree with, this was a smart move from Coffey, was to try and bridge Geschke up the road to the breakaway. And he's won big breakaway stages before in his career, Simon Geschke. He joined up with Dylan Turns, but they were actually quickly brought back by George Bennett, who started to pace. But again, when George Bennett was pacing, he was just maintaining the gap of about 40 to 45 seconds to the breakaway, which now is about to be solely comprised of Gino Maida riding Nielsen Paulus off his wheel. I think a big win for Paulus is coming up pretty soon. Astana tried to increase the pace for Vlasov with Omar Freyle and Luis Leon Sanchez, but... Honestly, they couldn't pull very hard for very long at all, and George Bennett went back around them. <laughs> and so with about 3.5 k's to go, Maida had a 38-second lead. The pace wasn't really on at all. George Bennett was just maintaining that gap until Stefan Kreisweig sauntered up to the side of Primoz Roglic and said, hey, do you want the stage? Uh, well, yeah, uh, always. Why not? Uh? So with Kreisweig having been kept fresh the whole day because the other teams were pacing and Roglic feeling good and the gap at only about 35 seconds, Kreisweig started launching it, eating into Maida's gap very, very quickly. He pulled off with 1,200 metres. Vlasov wasn't going to pull. He was left on the front and Roglic just started pacing with 1,300 metres to go with Schachmann, Lucas Hamilton on his wheel. He eventually pulled off and sat on the wheels in case other riders attacked him, to which Schachmann then accelerated with Vlasov following him. Tish Benoit counters to the right-hand side. No one can really follow except Roglic, who then decides to counter to the left-hand side of Tish Benoit. And it's really only Schachmann that can respond to Roglic acceleration with 900 metres to go. The gap's still 16 seconds, but Roglic acceleration puts six seconds into it very, very quickly. And it looks at this point, if Schachmann and Roglic keep pacing like this, that they will certainly catch Gino Maida with 750 metres to go. They already had him in their sights. But Roglic sat up. He had Schuckman on his wheel and he decided, well, if you want to extend your gap on Vlasov and Yoni Zagira, Schuckman, 
then you should pace. And you could see in real time the gap to Gino Maida extending once again, who was on his last legs already. So Schuckman does the right thing, being realistic, trying to protect his second on GC at this point. And Maida was almost out of sight once again around this bend with 400 meters to go. With Schuckman going at this pace, there was no way they were going to catch Gino Maida. He gets into the last 280 meters through this chicane, still has a six or seven second gap. The group behind has slowed so much that Tish Benut, Vlasov and Hamilton have caught back up to them until Roglic launches with his patented late attack in the last 280 meters out of the saddle for 26 seconds I counted. Schuckman cannot get back to his wheel this time. We were wondering where was Gino Maida? How close was he? He's within the last 100 meters. We just saw him flash through the last right hand bend but when the camera went to the finish line front on shot we knew that Gino Maida was done for. Heartbreak for him caught in the last 35 meters by Primoz Roglic coming second on the stage by two seconds. Absolutely devastating for the young Swiss rider with Primoz Roglic taking his third stage win of this year's Paris-Nice and all that wrapping up the general classification. But there was some criticism of Primoz Roglic on social media, which I actually think has been overblown at this point. People were more just disappointed for Gino Maida. Like obviously I wanted Gino Maida to win, but of course no one can or should criticize Roglic for going for the win. He's got an obligation to his teammates who worked. And yes, Roglic has given gifts in his career in the past, but I think his attitude attitude towards that has changed now. I did put a poll on my community tab to test the waters to see what people thought and three quarters of you agree that Roglic shouldn't have allowed Gino Maida to take the stage win and Gino Maida posted on Twitter afterwards acknowledging that Roglic was stronger and deserved the win. If you want to criticize anyone, criticize DSM, Bora and co who brought the gap down to the breakaway and didn't put a rider in it. Frankly, bringing Roglic and his train to the middle of that climb fresh and bringing the gap down to the breakaway to 35 seconds for them and then expecting to get anything out of the stage is delusional. This isn't the stage profile of today. This is Dauphiné Stage 2 last year, almost the same length climb and gradient and against much stronger competition, Roglic absolutely destroyed everybody. Yes, Jumbo did keep the break in control throughout the stage, but it reminded me much more of Stage 8 in the Vuelta last year to Farapona, when they were just pacing the break to keep the gap on GC in check, and despite having numbers on the climb, they allowed the break to win with Godou ahead of Soler. But regardless, another win for Roglic, two seconds ahead of Maida, five seconds ahead of Schuckman, eight seconds ahead of Hamilton, then Vlasov, Bernard, Martin, Izagire, Van Hoke, and Hinn make up the top 10 and it's tough to criticize Primoz Roglic for wanting to extend his gap on GC because it still is only 52 seconds going into the last stage. Where have we seen that before? Tomorrow's stage is the revised route that can't finish in Nice anymore. 93 k's long. Shouldn't be as difficult to control for Jumbo Visma as the original stage. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did. I'm going skiing and I'll see you with the highlights tomorrow. Ciao.